Hi, this is the fourth section of our video series. This will be on serverless and containers services in Azure and we'll see how to deploy our application on this kind of services. In the first video we'll speak about Azure Functions and serverless. And our goal will be to understand first of all the serverless model and then we'll create and use an Azure function and we'll see how it works. What is serverless computing? It's a transparent managed service. It's more abstract than the PaaS platform as a service one. And the compute machine is completely abstracted, actually. We won't see any more instances to manage. We have also transparent scaling. We don't have anything to adjust as a scale out or scale in measure. And uh, we don't have neither auto scale rule to configure. Actually, the service will auto-scale itself uh, as per our needs, per the executions we are requesting. Usually, we speak about event-driven services, although this is something more or less agreed in the community. And we consume, and by consequence, we pay a particular unit of work over a particular unit of service we execute. What are serverless services in Azure? We have error functions. We have logic apps. Azure Container Instances, Event Grid, and there are other services in Azure based on the serverless concept. We'll focus on Azure Functions because this is the main serverless service in Azure. It is something like a function as a service, if you want. It allows us to execute uh, methods, I would say, or pieces of code in a serverless manner. You don't need to provision or manage your infrastructure behind. It comes with a productive tooling, either if you develop on local environment in Azure, it comes with productive tooling, either if you develop on local environment with Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, or you develop in the Azure portal, you can develop it as a script actually, and develop your code directly in the portal. It comes with triggers and bindings. We'll see in a second what that means. And is a an open source service in Azure. That means you find all the implementation of the Azure Functions service in GitHub. But why we speak about serverless? Because our series is about Azure App Service. Well, actually Azure Functions rely on the App Service infrastructure. It executes as practically a web app, okay? And it is managed in a particular way in the sense that uh, there's a called consumption plan, which is like a normal app service plan, but it is shared by all the function apps in the region, I would say. Let's speak about several concepts. A function app is like a web app, as I said, and it includes one or several functions. The functions will be the methods or unit of service that we'll have. We have bindings. Bindings are special constructs that are adapted to make connections to different external services or applications, if you want. For example, you, we have bindings to Azure Storage or Azure Service Bus or, I don't know, uh, Cosmos DB. And we may have bindings for the input or for the output. So in the input case, we will receive the information, the data. It will be binded and mapped directly in objects uh, as parameters to our method. And for the output bindings, they will be also mapped as parameters, but as output parameters. Trigger, actually, our function. This is the way a function is launched, by a trigger. The function apps and the functions by this are deployed on plans because we speak about the app service infrastructure behind. So as I said before, we can have a consumption plan and we are really in the serverless case, but we can choose also an app service plan. In that case, our function will still be function as a service, but the execution won't be actually serverless. It is rather a platform as a service model. We'll also speak about other concepts. The durable 
functions are functions that are made to be executed on the long duration. And they have specific concepts like how to save the state of the function in a particular point in time, and later how to get it back in order to continue the execution, for example. Speaking about durable functions, a normal function, as the opposite, will be executed in a limited manner, I would say, a few minutes maximum, ideally, because this is the model, ideal model for a function itself. And then we have function proxies. As their name says, they are some kind of proxies. They help us to route, for example, calls from the input to some external endpoints. And we may also uh, add some light functionalities to the function. Let's see all that in action. Let's create a first Azure function in Azure. Let's create a function app. We'll create a resource, serverless function app. We'll give it a name in a new resource group. We'll deploy it on Windows and we'll use a consumption plan. That is the serverless deployment. We'll deploy it West Europe. We'll use the .NET runtime stack. As you may see, we may have also JavaScript or Java runtime stacks. We need to create or use an existing uh, Azure storage account for storing internal information of the function app itself. And we have also the option to attach from the beginning an application insights in order to have the application monitoring associated with this function app. Let's create it. Our function app was created. Let's go to the resource. So this is our function app. As you may see, there is no function yet created. It's just the function app itself. If we take a look very quickly, we may see that the function app has similar parameters as a typical web app, if you want. There are also specific parameters for function apps. Okay, let's create a function. So we have the option to use either Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, other editors, to create functions, or we can also create them in the portal. In that case, we'll select from different templates. These are two of them, and we select more templates. We can see that we have a large choice of them. Let's select an HTTP trigger for this case. I give a name to the function, and I will leave the authorization level to the function. And this is our first error function. It is an HTTP trigger, so it will be executed on each HTTP request coming to the function. As you may see, we have a parameter called a rec from a request, and we have also a second parameter for the logging. The example is pretty straightforward for a HTTP request treatment, and all the handling it's pretty similar to the ASP.NET Core way of working. This is a specific syntax, by the way, for the CS scripting language for Azure Function. And let's see for a second other tabs here in Integrate. We can configure the triggers and the bindings. The trigger for the launching the application, the function, is here. It's the HTTP one. And we don't have another input, only the input coming from the trigger, and we have an output binding, an HTTP one also. And we have other tabs like manage and monitor and so on. We'll just execute pretty quickly the function as is. Here we have the function URL, by the way. So we have this address slash API, and then we have a unique code which help us identify our uh, API calls. This is the authorization token. So let's run the function. As you may see, we have a pretty practical page which allows us to test pretty quickly our function directly in the portal. We may select if we test via POST or GET method. We can configure the request body. We can add query parameters or headers. We can also view the files associated to the function and to its configuration. And we have here the actual logs of the function. 
And we can have also a console. We can execute uh, basic commands against the local file system. So this is essentially a brief demo on Azure Functions.